Hi everyone, this is Lisa Dickinson here with this Friday's Scene Double video. Today I'm creating a simple layout and a card with the same pie chart design element that's created with a 6x6 paper pad. It's a cute way to incorporate journaling and add a really bold graphic to your projects. So today I've chosen to work with this 6x6 paper pad from Studio Calico. It's from the That Away line and it's got a good assortment of reds and aquas and oranges and um, a bunch of neutrals as well. This is actually a travel themed line, but I selected it more for its colors because I have these photos that I've printed out and these are from our recent trip to the local pumpkin patch. As you can see, there's a lot of orange and yellow and autumnal colors in my photos. So I thought this paper pad would really coordinate well with the photos. I'm going to start this page design with a simple sketch that I did based on my six photos. And I've printed these at about two and a half inches square. And I'd like to bring in lots of color and pattern with this pie chart element. I'm planning to make each piece of the pie a different paper from this pad. And then underneath the chart, I'll have space for a title and a little bit of journaling. I haven't completely figured out what the page title will be yet, but I'm thinking of tying it back to the pie chart with something like how we spend our time at the pumpkin patch or something like that. Okay, so the first piece of my layout I'm going to construct is the pie chart. To build this, I've created a template from white cardstock just by tracing a bowl that was the approximate diameter that I needed and then cutting it out. I measured and I found the center and then I drew lines to divide the pie into six areas. And now I'm just going to cut it apart so that I have little pieces to use as stencils on my pattern paper. I'm planning to trace each one of these little pie pieces onto my pattern paper and then I'll trim it out. If you have a die cutter, like a silhouette, you could use that to create this as well, but it's pretty simple to do it by hand. So there's the six pieces that will form the chart. And now I just need to select my papers from the six by six pad. I've already pulled out a few of the patterns that I like because they complement my photos without really competing with them for attention. I like how the yellow and red and aqua and this orange just complement what is already going on in the photos. And I've also grabbed this 12 by 12 sheet of blue paper, which obviously isn't from the pad, but there's so much blue in my photos, I think that I need to incorporate a slice of this in the pie chart. So the first step is just to trace my template pieces onto the back side of these pattern papers. And I always like to use the back side so that if the pencil marks show after you cut them out, then you don't have to go back and erase since you won't see it anyway. So I'll trace those with pencil and then I'll just trim them out with scissors. And I'm going to repeat the same process for all six pieces. All right, the pieces for the chart have been trimmed out. I ended up using five patterns from the Studio Calico paper pad, and then the blue piece is a 12 by 12 paper from American Crafts. My idea is to use each piece of the pie to represent an activity that we enjoy at the pumpkin patch, and those will kind of correspond to the six photos. So to start building the page, I'm first going to grab a piece of cardstock for my base. I've got a sheet of craft that I think might work since it's a neutral background for these fall colors. I'm just going to layer everything on top to get an idea of what it's going to look like before I commit. Oops. You know, and now that I see these colors on top of it, I'm thinking it's just a little bit blah. The contrast between the craft and the colors just isn't enough. So I think I need to try something a little bit deeper for the background. I love this wood grain from the cut and paste line and it's an obvious choice for outdoor and nature type photos, but it's quite a bit darker than my craft and I think it's going to provide a better contrast for the pie chart and the photos, really make them pop off the page.
Now turning my attention to the title, I've brainstormed a few options, but I narrowed it down to so many ways we enjoy autumn. It's a long title, but I'm thinking of breaking it up into three lines, like I did here, and using a different size sticker for each line. So I grabbed some stickers to consider. I've got a few thicker options and then this tiny alphabet from Basic Gray. And just looking at my sketch here, I'm thinking the first line could be this little white alphabet. And then the second word, enjoy, could be in this aqua foam or maybe these coral letters. And then I'm thinking a really large script for autumn. And I went ahead and cut out this silhouette cut of the word. This font that I used is called Bramble and it's a free download if you want to Google it. But just to get an idea of how these stickers are going to work together with the die cut, I use my clear ruler to position the two lines of stickers. And then I can lay it over the die cut and just see how it's going to look before I commit to sticking them down. And I kind of like the variety of fonts and sizes and I think this is going to work well. So now that my title's selected, my next step was to print out some journaling on white cardstock. I used a typewriter font to list six of the things that we love about fall, and then I just cut them into strips that I'll place on the different chart sec sections. And I'm going to move them around just to see what fits best in each spot. And since some of these are kind of long, so I'm just going to trim apart the words so then I can stack them to better fit the space. This is why I love journaling strips because you can always make them fit where you need them to go. So I think I've got the journaling arranged where I want it. Besides the words in the graph, I also printed a strip just to add below my title right here and then I also printed out the date. One thing I'd like to add to this page is a bit more detail in the graph. I'm thinking if I added some machine stitching around the edge of each of these pie pieces just with some white thread. I think that would be a nice bit of texture and just make this whole element stand out. And another thing I'm noticing is that the word autumn isn't quite as bold as I'd like it to be. The soft orange color is kind of getting lost amongst all the other elements. So I think what I'm going to do is just darken it up a bit with some spray ink. And this is um, a great use for spray ink. If something's not quite the right color, you can tint it. So I'm just going to grab my cardboard box here and spray this die cut with a little bit of orangey red ink. And the one I'm using is actually the Canyon Mr. Huey from Studio Calico. I think this will give it a bit more depth and richness and little ink splatters will also add some texture. So while this dries, I'm going to add the stitching to the pie pieces and then we'll see how it all looks together. You can see I added stitching to all of my little pies and then I adhered all of this to the background. I also adhered my photos using foam dots just for a little bit of dimension and to pop them up. And here is the die cut after the ink dried and you can see it's a little brighter and bolder now and it definitely stands out more. Originally it was this color orange and now it's just a few shades darker. So at this point, I'm ready to adhere my title lettering to the page. And then I just need a little bit of embellishing, and I think this page will be done. So I'm going to stick down the die cut first. Just using some adhesive here. And then I will arrange the letter stickers over the top of it once I have it positioned. So just move that up. And I'm going to stick it down right there. And I'll see if I can get these white letters to come off of here. Sometimes this works really well and sometimes you have to do a little bit of rearranging. But that's not quite straight. But I'll use my craft knife and just get all of these lined up. And 
then I will just peel off these foam ones and get them stuck down to the page as well. All right, let's embellish this page. You can see I've already pulled out this little arrow clip. And I am thinking of adding one of these two peas flare in the center of the graph. And that would just help cover up the fact that the points don't align perfectly. I like this little arrow one. I think that would be cute there. And I've also grabbed just some simple enamel dots because I use those a lot as well as these Maggie Holmes clips because I thought this aqua bow would coordinate with the other aqua elements that I have going on. I'm just going to arrange these around the page to kind of draw the eye to each area and just add a little bit of interest. Maybe put that arrow there. And thinking maybe just two little white dots down there would be simple. I'm wondering, I also have some more of these arrow clips in different colors. I might try adding one up here. Mm, I'm not sure that's bright enough. I think I like the bow better. Maybe put the white one up here. Mm. Yeah, I like the I like the bow down here next to the enjoy. I think that's kind of cute. And then maybe just sticking these two enamel dots down here to sort of finish off that corner. Here's a look at the finished result and some close-ups of the details. My next project is a card that uses the same Studio Calico paper pad. I'm starting with a craft card base that's cut 5 to 10 and then folded in half to be 5 by 5. And I've also got a piece of white cardstock that I cut to 4 and a half by 4 and a half. And this is what I'm planning to adhere the pie chart on, and then I'll put it onto the card base. I've cut out the same pie pieces, just on a smaller scale for the card. So the original circle template for this was about 3 and a half inches in diameter. And I'm going to arrange them like so on this cardstock. And I want to add stitching to this page as well. But instead of adding stitching around the edges, since they're so tiny, I'm thinking I'll add it just down the middle of each piece, just a straight line. I'll use some adhesive just a little bit to hold these in place while I sew them. And I'm going to adhere them towards the top edge of the cardstock just so that it leaves room on the bottom for my sentiment. So I'm going to get these all arranged here and then I will add the stitching with my sewing machine. All right, I've added stitching to each wedge, and I trimmed off all of the extras. And I'm just going to take some of these edges and bend them up a little bit to add some dimension to the front of the card. And then I'll adhere this piece to my craft card base. So I've got these tiny word stickers from my mind's eye. And I'm planning to add one to each of the wedges, just like I did on my layout. I'm going to pick out some of the adjectives on here, like beautiful and talented and wonderful, and words that would describe the person receiving the card. 
and I'm just going to stick them down where they seem to fit in the little pie pieces. With the pie chart done, I'm ready to add a sentiment to the bottom edge. I'm using the Jelly Bean Alpha Beans in Aqua, and I'm going to spell out the word awesome. I'll add the words you are in front of it with a pen, just handwritten. But I'm going to start applying the letters backwards from right to left, and that way I can control where the word ends. Because if I, if I started on the left and went left to right, then I wouldn't know exactly where to put the first letter, and it might spill over the edge. So I work backward just to avoid that. Now all that's left is to add the words you are, and I'm just writing those on here with an aqua pen. So here's a look at the completed card. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed watching these projects with a 6x6 paper pad come together. Don't forget to tune in next Friday for another video in the Scene Double series. And for more scrapbook inspiration, supplies, and videos, be sure to check out twopeasinabucket.com.